Okay, so the other day I found what I reckon is one of the coolest mathematical techniques that I've seen. You're just going to have the sickest time solving questions with this. Basically, it turns out that you can solve um, real roots of arbitrary cubics that have real coefficients by just folding paper. So this is a combination of two methods. One is Lille's method, which is a visual method for solving roots of polynomials that apparently was largely forgotten, and then this cool thing called a Belloc square. So I don't want this video to take too long. I might do another one that has more background and theory, but just to show people the application because it's so cool and just to run through the technique. Um, so I've drawn up the start of the question. So the cubic fun equation that we're going to be solving here is x cubed minus 1.3x squared minus 2x plus 1.2. And so I've already got the roots here. They're all real. And so we've got 0 0.5, negative 1.2, and 2. And the cool thing about the whole method that we're doing is that if we've got all real coefficients of a cubic, we're guaranteed at least one real solution. So if, you, if your equation only has one real solution, you can still find that with this method and then just use polynomial long division to take that cubic down to a quadratic. And then you can just complete the square or whatever you like to do and find the final roots from there. So this can completely solve a cubic this can help to completely solve a cubic that has all real coefficients. So the basic thing that this paper folding method comes down to is that uh, we've got this, so I'll take it from the start, we've got this point A and we grab the first coefficient A3 which, and so here it's just 1 and we travel a distance equivalent to that coefficient and then we turn 90 degrees and so since we have a negative coefficient we're going to move negative that distance down, turn 90 degrees again and then we have another negative coefficient, so we're going to move an, a distance corresponding to that, but in the negative direction. And then we're going to turn 90 degrees once more. We have a positive coefficient, so we've moved down there, and we've got our final termination point, B. And this should be a naught, and that should be a 1. Okay, so now, and then we've got these lines called R dash and S dash, which are found by... Um, finding this line A2 and then you're going to get a distance equivalent to A3, the other side, and then draw a line and it's going to be parallel to A2. And then similarly this S dash line, we're going to start at A1 and then travel the distance A0 in the other direction. And then we're going to um, just draw a line that is parallel to A1 there. And so what this technique comes down to is that we've got to make a fold such that A lands directly on R dash and such that B directly lands on S dash. And then we're going to use this cool thing from Lille's method, which is that the root of the equation is equal to the negative tan of the angle of these lines that we're going to form. So let's first, let's just try and make a fold. So um, hopefully you can kind of see this on camera. I'll fold it down. So we've got our A point, and I want it to land on R dash. So I'm going to fold this guy. Um, let's see where it goes. So A, 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 A is up here, and let's see if B lands on its line, because that's part of the technique. But obviously, it's not going to here. Okay. So now, we take this back. So B, let's chuck that on its line S dash, and let's see where A falls. So A falls short, so that means we need to change the fold. So we're going to slide these and let's go a dash is on the line here and so let's see b dash that's way off so we've just got to keep sliding and sliding and sliding until they land on there and so now a uh, falls on r dash so let's just make the fall a little bit better um, and then B falls on S dash. So now we've got a fold on our paper. And let's just make the crease. Alright, and so now I'm just going to take note of where A fell onto R dash. So let's just observe this. And so it falls about here. And so additionally we're going to make a note where B falls on S dash. And so we're going to make a, a mark here. And so I'm going to call this um, A1 dash because that indicates our first root and it's the A point 
um, that appears on R dash, and then we've got B1 dash. And so now all I'm going to do is just draw a line between these two. And then similarly, I'm going to draw a line between B and B1 dash. Alright, and then you'll notice, you'll go, wait, hold the phone. This crease is perpendicular to both of these lines I just drew. So, let's just make that crease more prominent. And so, all I've got to do now is just draw a line down this crease that connects these two lines that link A1 dash and B1 dash. So I've drawn this line, and then now all we have to do is, so remember that a root, so, sorry, so the angle theta is defined in here. It's also defined at other points on the curve, but let's just do it here because it's easy. Um, so you'll think, oh man, I don't have a protractor on me, but if you recall, tan theta is just equivalent to the opposite side of a right angle triangle over the adjacent side, which is what we've got here, because this is just a right angle in here. So, let's just look at the distance here. So, we'll measure this, and so this brings us to 2.4. So, we've got 2.4 for our first, for our opposite side, and then down here, we measure that to be 2. And so that equals 1.2, but we've got to remember it's negative, so our root is negative 1.2. And so there are just some tricks here. Um, so for instance, we traveled a negative direction down this line, so that means for this single dimension, ac single dimension axis, um, it's negative down here and it's positive up here. So this is a positive length, so you can have negative lengths. This is a positive length divided by a positive length and then we take the negative to get the root. And so, yep, as we can see, negative 1.2, that's a root. And so, because the, I don't want the video to drag on too long, I've already completed the rest of it here. And so this is that same line here we found to get um, negative 1.2 as our root. And so these are two other lines that I did by um, fo folding the paper and um, finding curves. So let's just measure them. So, do 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 do. Um, this, okay, well, we can we can just see this anyway. So we've got this this red line here, and so once more, theta is in here. And so we go, okay, what's the length of this? This is 2, and so we're going to go 2 divided by 4, which is just 0 0.5. And so you think, okay, this side is a negative length, and so we're going to have, and it's in the negative direction, so we're going to have negative 2, that was 2, yep, that was 2. Um, negative 2 divided by positive 4, so that's going to yield negative 0 0.5, but recall that it's negative tan theta, so we're going to have a root of positive 0 0.5, which was um, one of our roots for this equation. So found this guy, found this guy, and now let's find the final one, uh, which is given by this blue line. And so we can see, oh, well, this is straightforward. We can see this line here, and on the grid, it directly hits a grid point on here. So let's just go, so that's 8. And so I'm going to call that this is 4. Yep, 8 divided by 4, that's 2. And so, again, this is a negative distance. So we've got negative 8 divided by positive 4 is negative 2, but then we take the negative of that because it's negative 10 theta in the Leal's method, which then gives us positive 2 as a root, which is our final root. And sweet. And so I might do another video with more theory. I just wanted to make this quick, even though it's not terribly quick. Um, some of your things can look like this. And so, I don't know, in an exam, if you're not allowed to calculate it, got, got to solve a cubic. You can use your scrap paper in prep time, or you can just do some old origami. But anyway, I just thought this was the coolest thing ever. Um, I'll put a link to the paper that I read to learn this method. But yeah, definitely give it a go. It's such a cool thing.